Hey everyone, welcome back to the Galway SeaTech channel. In this project, I'll be showing you how to install an attic ladder with an insulation cover. Let's get the project kicked off. I'm using an OptiStep attic ladder, which is 60 centimeters wide and 120 centimeters long. I'm measuring the width and length and I add an additional 20 millimeters to the measurements. The hatch frame should have a 10 millimeter gap around the attic ladder to allow it to be centered and aligned during installation. In the attic, I remove the flooring so I can measure and modify the existing hatch joists. The flooring will have to be cut once the new frame has been installed to accommodate the new attic ladder dimensions. It's important to remove the insulation between the joists to give a clear working area. On both sides of the hatch, I'll install temporary support beams to prevent the joists from moving while I'm modifying the existing hatch dimensions. The supporting beams are screwed into the existing joists and will provide temporary support during the installation. These beams will be removed once the new hatch joists have been installed. Plan the hatch location in advance and try to minimize the amount of cuts to existing joists where possible. Seek professional advice if you have load bearing joists. With a hammer and chisel, remove the architrave, timber and screws from the existing hatch. You want a clean work area to measure and mark the new hatch dimensions. The attic ladder is 60 centimeters by 120 centimeters. Therefore, the hatch frame will be 80 centimetres wide and 140 centimetres long to allow for a 10 millimetre gap around the frame. I use nails to mark the centre and corner point references for the new hatch frame. I check the markings are square by measuring diagonally at the corner points with a measuring tape. Then I use a pencil and square to mark an outline of the frame in the plasterboard. With an oscillating cutting tool, I cut the outline for the ladder frame and removed the plasterboard with a hammer and chisel. Next, I removed the existing joists with a reciprocating saw. I measure and mark the joists that need to be cut. The circular saw cuts half the joists initially and the reciprocating saw cuts the remainder. You want to cut the joist square, that is why the circular saw is used initially. Alternatively, a handsaw tool can be used. Use a hammer to remove nails from the joist where possible. As you can see, there's an existing electrical cable that will have to be extended to accommodate the new frame. Try to avoid additional electrical and plumbing work. If you can, otherwise the job can become expensive. That's why it's important to plan the layout in advance before making any modifications. If you can move the frame a few hundred millimetres, it could mean avoiding unnecessary electrical or plumbing jobs. I measure and cut the new joist frame with the chop saw. In addition, I cut a few noggins to securely fix the frame to the joist. Each frame piece is secured with wood screws on either end. To ensure the frame is square, measure the distance diagonally from one point to the other and do the opposite corners. These distances should match if the frame is square. Once the hatch frame has been securely fixed to the joist, remove the support beams on either side. You want access to the joist to install the noggins to the hatch frame. The noggins will provide additional support to the frame and ensure existing joists are securely fixed. Take care that the necessary supports are in place. You don't want to compromise the structural integrity of the joist.
I isolated the main breaker on the fuse board and cut the electrical cable. I extended the electrical cable with a junction box on each side. Before cutting the attic flooring for the new hatch dimensions, I packed the rafters with insulation and filled any potential gaps around the frame. Then I carefully cut the flooring with a jigsaw and screwed down the flooring. You don't want any air gaps between the joists and the insulation, otherwise heat will be lost. Next, I install temporary support boards to hold the attic ladder in position while I'm fixing it to the hatch frame. The boards should overhang by 20 millimeters. You'll have to open the attic ladder hatch to fix it to the frame, so make sure you have enough clearance. For this next step, you'll need two people. You need someone at the ladder to support the weight of the attic stairs from the bottom and you'll need someone in the attic to maneuver the ladder into position. The ladder is supported with the boards below. Once the ladder is in position and aligned correctly, the attic door latch is opened and it can be fixed to the frame. I use thin wood shims to align and fix the ladder to the frame. Measure diagonally to verify ladder is square and is in the correct position. Once the ladder is fixed in position, remove the support boards. Next, I'll measure and cut the ladder legs. To measure the ladder leg distance, unfold the ladder and measure the distance from the ladder joint to the floor. Measure both legs as the floor may not be level. I recommend buying leg covers for the ladder to give a clean finish and you don't have to worry about the floor gradient. To finish the job, I needed to install the architrave. I measured the ladder frame to get the dimensions. I didn't have a thin cutting blade for the chop saw, so I decided not to mitre the architrave. I drilled the pilot holes for the screws and painted the architrave before I fixed it to the hatch frame. The architrave is fixed to the frame with wood screws. I found wood screws better to securely fix the architrave and I used wider architrave to cover up the exposed plasterboard. That's the attic ladder installation completed. I'll give a brief tour of the installation. Thank you for watching and please like and subscribe if you like the content. If you have feedback on the project, leave a comment below. I'm always interested in watching other DIYers, so send me links to your projects. One more tip before I go, I wanted to insulate the attic door hatch to eliminate drafts from the attic into the hallway and to reduce heat loss. I purchased the hatch insulator from a company in Cork and I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. After installing the insulator hatch, it made a massive difference to retaining heat in the hallway. I installed a timber bead frame around the attic insulator to help me align the cover before closing the hatch. I hope this tip helps you with your project and thank you for watching.